All right. We'll reintroduce ourselves real quick. So my name is Ben, founder of No Diploma. This is Aldo. Aldo. James. James. Teo. Teo, media team. Loso. How about Loso. Here? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is our brand. Uh, the story behind it, I used to study at LaSalle College, um, came to school, and after two years, I went on a trip to Asia. I did a backpack trip, and uh, I got a one-way ticket. I just kind of went out there with the purpose of just finding myself a little bit, discovering myself a little bit. And while I was there, I was having so much fun that uh, my students or my classmates were texting me and they're like, yo, class started, we're working on the order project. And this was leading up to the last year. And then I started questioning myself, like, should I, should I go back to school, should I not? And then that's when I made the decision to not go to school. And I kind of just went on the path of if I'm not going to be in school, I'm going to go learn from other designers, other brands um, in the city. So that's when I took the year off that I told my parents I was taking a year off, but it ended up being more than a year. Um, so I went to work for different brands um, that gave me a lot of opportunities to go like to Paris Fashion Week, London Fashion Week. So I got to really learn about the industry and how it works from manufacturing to branding to really building a brand from, from the start. Um, so during that time, I was working on a lot of like personal projects as well. Um, I used to, I, I love clothing for the fact that it's like a means to express something, a means to tell a story and share a message. So I always use clothing to kind of do that. So um, while I was working with this brand, I would do pop-ups and come up with different drops and ideas. And one day, um, these two words kind of just fell on my lap because it was just, at the moment in time, it was something that resonated with me a lot. And it was kind of just, you know, just having a group of friends going, you know, having different scholarships and, you know, the social pressure and parents, parental pressure of, you know, going to school. Um, so that was my way of like just expressing myself and putting it on a shirt. And then it became kind of like um, my billboard, you know, kind of just like walking around with a walking billboard. And it kind of just sparked conversations with people. And at the time, it was just a t-shirt, but those words um, became bigger than that. And I kind of saw um, every time that I would wear it, it would spark conversations, and people would share their stories. And that's when I kind of saw the vision for like a movement. It was bigger than just a shirt. So click. <laughs> so that's how um, the brand started. And then I found my tribe. Um, which is my people here, my team. And um, we have many other members as well that are not here today. But um, yeah, uh, do you guys want to like introduce yourselves, kind of give a little background maybe of how you met the team? Um, all that. Going back to Ben's story, I remember you telling me that Ben used to work with this brand uh, from a friend. And he had this idea, this no diploma idea. And I think he told the designer from this brand about it and I think he was like wow that's a great idea for the brand and that's when you took the big the big step and you were like no it's actually I'm keeping this idea I'm actually gonna stop working with you and start working on this I remember you that's telling true. me that but um, as he's saying yeah I feel like everything we design it's uh, it represents a little bit our stories like how we feel in what we learned in the past days and somehow we can always relate we're pretty much every time feeling these same things in the same time for some weird reason i guess that's why we're friends and work uh together but definitely having such a team being a thing for us you know um when you find these people like that connect with you so easily and you feel like you can be talking with these people for like hours and hours, that's your people. Not only people to work and create a brand, but that's people that you want to have around. That's people that actually matches your energy, as is Loso, Ben, James, and our apartment 200 DJ, Taylor. <laughs> Switch? Uh, Are you guys want to jump in? Jump? Yeah, you just want to say like, Yeah. Yeah. So actually, I found out about the brand when I was studying here. I was taking a class um, with V-Brands, actually, and he was showing a bunch of examples of Montreal brands and stuff, and he showed Notopoma, 
and I remember seeing it like in, in class and it just really f that resonated with me because when I came to Salas like my third or fourth college university in like five years fourth program I kept hopping around I kind of was like is this gonna be worth it? But that message really resonated with me. I bought bought some clothing that year from Ben, met him, and then we kind of connected, got to meet all the other guys, and we all just kind of related to each other with our whole stories and like what we did before we met. You know, we really connected with one other, or, sorry, with one each other. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so basically, I my experience with Notre Poma is kind of similar to his. Um, I used to study uh, film and new media at Champlain College. And uh, for one of our projects, we had to like interview somebody, anyone, about something that interests us. And I was a really big like, uh, like the number one fan of Notopoma. Notopoma had a hundred fans. I was one of them. If Notopoma had ten fans, I was one of them. And if Notopoma had no fans, I was dead. So like I was <laughs> buying like everything, you know. And then at one point, like I offered, like, hey, can I? Like, film you for a documentary and like, you know, Ben is a shy guy so it took some convincing but um, she was like hey um, okay well if you if I let you film this documentary on us like do you want to shoot some behind the scenes of a shoot and then I went to that shoot it was for some rugby's at Van Horn Skate Park I shot BTS of that shoot and then we went over to his place edited the stuff and I guess ever since I've just I mean, you around. shot that the BTS. That was so good. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea he shot it. No, yeah. sir? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I met you about a year ago, right? Yeah, we went. We, we met at an outdoor gym. I was, yeah, like, working I out. Just, uh, <laughs> I just moved here from New York, and he told me, oh, I got this thing. It's called No Diploma. I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. Why right, right in there, I was like, I want to be part of this. You know, and he's like, yo, come through. I tell them what I do. I'm in charge of like graphic design. I do stuff like that. So I'll be helping them with the designs, the concept, and all of that, ideas. Yeah. yeah so it has been a great journey meeting him. And yeah, man, you could do. <laughs> <laughs> Click. Um, so yeah, once, once you have your team, you have your story, um, building your world is like, the important thing, right? It's like, how do you put all your values together, your message together, and build something that's bigger than, you know, um, the clothing, so. So yeah, branding is a huge part of, you know, building a brand, and, you know, we often think that brand, like a brand is like um, a logo, we associate it to a, like a logo, but it's much bigger than that, you know? It's, it's, like, it's like, what do you represent, you know? What are your values? Um, things like that. So that's a bit about branding. I don't know if you want to jump in. Yeah, on that. your your story. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, it's a uh, an opportunity, as Ben said before, it's an opportunity to communicate, and it opens all kinds of doors. You know. Mm -hmm. Next. Yeah. Um, so design language. Um, when you're building a brand too, it's like coming up with your you know design language, whether it's like typography, graphics. Also, the way we communicate with our community, like each season, we call them semesters because um, we ironically use a bit of like the school academia language into our things, um, just because it's very ironic with the name, no diploma. Some brand. Um, and yeah, these are logos. Maybe Loso could talk a little bit about design if you want to touch on it. Uh, design language, what, is that what we're talking about? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so. I don't know, most of this stuff is just like, uh, I do a lot of research. I'll just give y'all like my, a little bit of my design process, right? So it's like, I do a lot of research, I read a lot of books, and I go visit like libraries, places just to find different ideas, things that, that was done maybe like 10 years ago, 20 probably and kind of like take it, transform it, rebranding pretty much, uh, recreating things already been done. Most of this stuff, I don't know, you may come across with it, but we're just recreating constantly. Yeah. And I think that's what art is, you know, just recreating what's already been done. 
there's no real need to to re to make something new, but take what's already done and just flip it up. Well, we brainstorm for designs. Um, you know, we all come with like references, you know, and I can tell like where this guy took his references or Teo or Ben, but we can never tell or know where Lhasa got his references. He gets the most crazy, old school, weird references ever, <laughs> to be honest, but yeah. you're the king, man. He's like the archive king. He'll yeah. dig into like a bunch of crazy, man. things. Yeah. No, because like there's so many resources out there anyway. It's like, you know, you got the internet, you got bookstore, there's library, you, just, you know. He knows how to shape it. It's just yeah. dedication, you know, to your craft, you know. Yeah. I mean, to a good love, to a passion, you know, when you're passionate about some, it's different. And guys, never, I feel like we never stick to one logo, you know? I feel like this is like the most vintage one, so we really like have a personal thing with it. But like, there is no rule in the fashion world, design world, where you need to stick to one logo, you know? I feel like having fun with logos kind of refresh um, what you're going through, your refresh eyes, everything, well, the refreshes. eyes, the designs too, you know? Every logo is good for a design, for aesthetic, for a direction, so. Staying true to the message. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, basically most of the It's about freedom, you know? Yeah. Click. Um, so, yeah, with Building a World, there is, you know, the pop-up aspect, the installation aspect, and, like, whenever we do these types of things for clothing drops or for pop-ups, we really like to go all out and just really create, like, an experience, you know? So, um, as you see, <laughs> we, we, we put a tent. Um, in this pop-up, it was around, the concept was around um, outdoor goods, which was one of our latest collections. So just every little detail, and this is just one part of the room, but like little details like using harnesses to hang the clothes and like, you know, different elements. The smell, we had some incense, we had different plants and all that type of thing. Yeah, I think that, that was crazy. Like the whole idea of tents. I was even cool when I came back here. They had this whole thing set up. I was like, yo, this is crazy. It was not even planned the tent, actually. Yeah. Um, we had like a whole installation. We got so many plants, you know, and stuff. And then this girl who wanted to like participate and help us with the pop-up, she worked, where did she work again? North Face, I think. And she was like, yo, they gave me this crazy tent. I can just bring it. And we're like, sure, why not? Good but we had no it. idea it was so dope. Once she placed it, we're like, OK, we're ready. People will come in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, with everything we're building, we're always conceptualizing and you know just trying to dig deeper into different ideas, whether it's collections, packaging, um, anything to kind of enhance the experience of the brand and experience of our movement and what we stand for. You know? Yeah, even like the brand, like uh, the past collection, that idea was based on the uh, audio clip. goose was was yeah yeah. So I don't know if you guys can see like the mountains and all that. I was really inspired by Vancouver, like my experience while I was living in Vancouver about a year, about two weeks ago, three maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just the scenery in Vancouver, like the city and the mountains in nature it was. Mm -hmm. it was so crazy. when it was crazy to me. So yeah. I told Ben, I was like, Yo, we we gotta make a collection out of this because there's so much inspiration here, so much art. In, in this, so the auto came through, and this is how we... And uh, it was when the whole pandemic thing happened. Yeah, it was So we all needed yeah. to, like, find ways to take care of ourselves, you know, so, like, do that activity that would become, like, your therapy, you know? Yeah. So. And, like, everything, everything we create is just, like, a reflection of, like, ourselves and what we go through. So we just kind of put that into our message, into our clothes, and we let that express it itself you know through the design and through the photo shoots we do through the pop-ups so knowledge itself was a big one too especially after the pandemic like we're as a team we we're always like working on ourselves and you know doing different activities to help our well-being so that kind of inspired you know knowledge itself and as we said before like uh the two main goals with this is to like communicate something and as like ben said like find a way to create curiosity uh, and build these conversations, break the ice. I want people, like, we want people to like, see the designs and be like, oh, disconnect to reconnect. That reminds me of this, why this, you know? 
because at the end of the day, it's about like connecting with people through the fabrics, you know, the clothing. To in our design process too, whenever we start like new collections, I feel like in the beginning, we always first start conversations with each other, asking where we are mentally and where we're at in lives. And that kind of starts like all these different conversations that open up these different ideas, kind of with like knowledge itself. We just, during that time, like we already said with the pandemic, we just talked about more of that self healing and coming up with different ways for like, I don't know, just to live a overall mentally, physically healthy lifestyle and just certain things like that stem from yeah. our designs. Wait, is it like, uh, like the knowledge itself, it came out of a movie that we watched, all uh, watched, right? We all watched that too, movie, yeah. Um, the show? The yeah. show, the Wu Tang show. Yeah, that's gonna watch that. Yeah, it's fire. It, it's the whole collection pretty much was based on the whole movie. Yeah. You know, I know you, you know, they already touched on that, but yeah, yeah, we really got inspired by the language they were speaking in the movie, mm -hmm. which is so different from what we know about, and you know that, you know, throughout the whole collection. He put us in a place that we could even dig more by ourselves. It's like what we want to do, what we doing, what we doing. So mm -hmm. we really found a song. Yeah, that's our knowledge that yeah. came through. Yeah. And, and this, um, oh, Go well, I was gonna say well, we did like a giveaway with the beanies, but we asked like questions like, "What does knowledge self mean to you?" And we got a lot of beautiful answers from our community of just saying, just like beautiful words of just what it really means. Yeah. Yeah. And we yeah. use that. Yeah. And this, yeah, packaging is a huge part of building a brand, you know, always coming up with fresh ideas for this collection. We had our, our own labels for them with a little quote at the back when you lift it. So it's like knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom. Right. Um, this was a cool little detail. We love playing with details. And even like when you're sending out a package, we always have like handwritten notes. We throw some stickers in there. We like meet up with our customer face to face. We don't have an office. We're still building this for my apartment, so we're meeting people at like metro stations, yeah, which is pretty funny. But <laughs> some, <laughs> yeah, local pickups. So when you take care of like details, I feel like it expands uh, your freedom. Yo, my favorite word is God is in detail. So yeah. Thank I mean, you. So <laughs> God is in detail, like... I love that. You know, you put that on a shirt, maybe. <laughs> it's okay. You don't have to be with God to understand that, you know, like, it's fine. Switch. Uh, so, yeah, um, building your own world also goes into your photo shoot concepts, your videos and everything. So this is, like, um, a couple photos that we got from our last drop. So we got really inspired by, like, furniture design with our friends. Uh, they have, a like, a vintage furniture store, so we shot that there, and... Uh, yeah. Here again, we all feel like furniture a lot, you know, it's part of like our life, you know, we discuss about it. And uh, I feel that when we shoot, it's very important that we always like show the energy of the shoot. We show the direction and we also cannot forget that we're selling a product right here. So we also need like a balance between like all these things and being commercial too, you know, a balance of shots. That's pretty much how we plan our shots, pretty much. Good. Uh, so yeah, this is another uh, lookbook shot that we had from, I don't know why it's super saturated on the screen, but anyways. Um, uh, yeah, this is our lookbook for the knowledge itself. So we created like a set that represented like our home living. So we had some incense, some plants, and just a cozy vibe. We had a really nice video too that yeah. demonstrated. And we have Cam, the model, who's yeah. not a model, but she's amazing. She can kill it. She's a local uh, photographer that travels the world that we felt really inspired by. And that's why we decided to work with her because it makes sense. Like, first of all, like she supports the brand, and second, like what she does, like she travels, take photos, go hiking. You know, she's discovering herself. Like she's like, if you guys check her out, Cam Blanchon, like the way she markets herself, herself as a photographer is insane. She's killing it, mm -hmm. you know? So we try to work with people who are inspiring and who make sense. Yeah. Yeah, also like uh, through all, you like go back, go back sorry, a little sorry, bit. Sorry. Moving too fast out here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you know, like clothes and furniture or even like interior design, it goes really well together because you put on clothes when you're in a house, right? You know, so basically the premise with the design of the whole collection was also like, you know, the, where the clothes, you know, what does the clothes seat, where this, 
was at the collection seats on, you know. So that's how we came out with the taste of a little bit of furniture design and and also we right? we so are a local brand, you know. So we kind of try to support our friends, our community as much as we can. So like, yeah. for example, like this right here is designed by one of our friends. She's so talented, you know. The furniture is from the same spot we did the shoot with the blue. That's one of Cam's jersey. photos. That's her frame right there, you know. So I feel it's important that you show the love back to the people. It makes sense, right? Pretty much all the models we use are not even models. They're just friends of the community, you know? Cool people. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's another shoot, Outdoor Goods. Um, we shot it in a forest uh, close by. It's really fun. Aldo shot it. It's really dope. Mosquitoes were crazy. Yeah. Jeez. Get a shot. How's it cheap? Next. Um, oh yeah, so don't be different, be better. So this is like a segment of the presentation where we want to talk a little bit about like marketing. Because um, it's super important and I feel like when I went to school I didn't really learn much about marketing and I feel like at the end of the day, if you're going to be designing clothes, you need to sell the clothes, you know. It's a business, right? So you need to find refreshing ways of, you know, doing marketing and um, really put yourself out there, you know and be seen. So for us, this is just like a new little example, but like JJ Jown had a drop um, and he had posted a bunch of posters everywhere and we recreated the same poster but with our hoodies and we just kind of like um, took over the wall. We took the yeah. same wall. <laughs> and it was the same day that he, he, the same day that he released the collection um, and we did it and we posted and it was the same frame, the same photo. So for people, we're kind of confused, like, what? But it was literally this, like, you could go on his IG, and our IG is the same thing. But again, it's just disrupting, you know? Like, disrupting a little bit, making yourself seen, and just let people know, like, you know? Um, Sometimes you got to do it that way. Right? That's your identity right there. You know? That's where you come from, you know? Like, yeah. You got to have fun doing your marketing. It's an art form, marketing. Yeah. It really is. Yeah, but don't, don't, don't do that, guys, by the way. <laughs> that was Click. too gangster, I think. Right. <laughs> I think this one was too gangster, but um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, this was school bus, and we had a, an event coming up where it was like a live uh, music show, and the poster was like people in a bus riding in a Notopoma bus, but um, so yeah, we put that on a bus. That took like one second because a second later there was a tall guy, you know, you can't imagine how the guy is, he's just calling the cops, and we're like, man, we just... Okay. Hey, it's not <laughs> <laughs> like, they don't have to know that. So yeah, again, just marketing, you know, street street marketing, letting people know, you know. What we do. Um, so a huge part of what we do and what we stand for is community. And like James said, every shoot we do, every video we do, anything that we actually pretty much do is like we involve people uh, from the community, whether it's like if we have a video and we need a song, it's like, yo, we ask the community, like, anyone has a track, a beat that we could use. Um, if it's for a photo shoot, we just send a little story. We cast directly through Instagram, um, video, anything. Like, we literally, that's how we met Teo. That's how we met, you know, a lot of the people. That's how we met, you know, Loso. So community is huge. So this is... Um, an event that we did a few months ago. Um, it was a pop-up during the day, and then at night we had a show and tell, which is like a live music um, experience. So we created kind of like a NTS um, tiny desk uh, show, which we just kind of created like our living room, and people kind of just sat around. People were chilling in some in a tent as well, and we had different performers from Toronto, Montreal, New Jersey. Um, we had like, and it's all people from the community again. So that was a very special moment for us because it allowed us to like think beyond just like doing a pop up with clothes on a rack. It's like you know we want to really bring people together and create an experience that's memorable, you know, and that kind of shifts the culture in a way, you know, where we blend different things that we're into. You know, we're into music, we're into clothes, we're into design. So it's like how do you create that space and that environment where that welcomes all those elements, you know? And one thing I'll say like when we have our pop ups like. The clothing's there, but that's not like the main focus. Like the main focus is the people that come. Like whenever people come, we first ask them like what they do, how are they, and like we just really try to build those like personal connections first. Yeah. And one of the bigger things, the problem we had like 
well, personally, it's like when I used to go to pop-ups when I moved to Montreal, it was a lot of people just like hanging out on the walls with their cool outfits and just kind of like grilling you when you walk in, you know? Yeah. And I, I just didn't feel like that sense of welcoming. So when I, I told myself if I'm going to create a brand one day, it's going to be like open doors to everyone, you know? And that's what we're all about. Yep. So some more shots from, you know, customers, clients. And, you know. And uh, recently we did um, also a yoga, meditation, um, breathing uh, events. So again, it's like stepping out of like the clothing realm. It's like, it's not only about clothes. It's like, what are your, what does your brand stand for? You know, what are your values? What are you Language. representing? You know, so for us, it's like, you know, this is a big part of our identity. Um, exposure. It's like a quick little pic we threw in there of uh, Khaled wearing our hoodie. Um, big surprise, guys. Yeah, so ex exposure is very good, too, just to kind of, like, um, unify your message with people that represent it well. You know, like, if you guys know Khaled and his music, it's very positive. It has a nice message, and, like, what better person to wear it, you know? So target market. Uh, go back. Sorry. Yeah. So target market, since you guys are um, taking this on as a project. Is it this class, Lucy? Yeah? OK, sweet. Um, yeah, so I just want to give you guys a little bit of a breakdown. I'll probably send Lucy like a sheet after so you guys could have it as well by email um, so you don't forget. But um, so yeah, our clientele is basically like young creatives, entrepreneurs, um, outsiders, you know, people that have unconventional paths. Um, and they range from like 18 to 35. Um, it's really interesting because we checked our analytics last night just for fun. And we found out that like 35% of our market is 18 to 25. And then 26 to 35 is our other 35%. So that's like 70% of the market is like 18 to 35. And then from 35 to 65 is like 30%, which is probably some of our parents our supporting. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and then um, what else? Location, we sell worldwide, but the top three countries or places is um, Canada, US, um, parts of Europe like London, Paris, uh, yeah, France, and uh, cities in, in Canada. We have like Montreal, BC, Vancouver, um, uh, Toronto, and then the states we have like New York, LA, and Virginia actually is the first one, surprisingly. It's really random, but. Um, where? The gender do? You want to talk yeah, gender is, uh, yeah, sorry. So 60 40, um, 60 men, 60% 60 men and 40% women, which is really, really nice because, like, a lot of our clothes, we always try to, like, design with intention to, like, make it unisex, you know, so people, everyone could kind of wear it. So, yeah, 60 40 is our demographic for that. And, yeah. Um, should we get into this or before do, like, a little QA? Yeah? OK, cool. Um, do you guys have any questions for us? Yeah. Sure. I have a question about one yeah. of your products. And I just want to see how you did not get in trouble for this. Oh, OK. Uh, it's the, the folder that looks like a hill over a folder. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I saw it, and I'm like, wait, like, how did you not get in trouble? Because it, it looks exactly the same, except yeah. you throw a logo on it. And I mm -hmm. just want to know uh, what was your idea and like oh, yeah. how did you Get away with it. Right. And like I'm saying, like it's illegal. Obviously, I just want to see, yeah. like your thought process through this. Yeah. Again, it's just like playing um, ironically with like a little, you know, the Hillroy. Like we all grew up with the Hillroy, you know, um, journal. So for me, it was like an iconic piece that you bring to school. So I just wanted to do a logo flip on the Hillroy logo, and um, we printed our own booklets, and we sold them. Um, it looks exactly like Hillroy, but <laughs> it just has the Notopoma logo. Um, but that's that to me is like that to me is streetwear. You know, like streetwear is very about like flipping things, making things you know um, fun and playful. Um, the reason why we didn't get in trouble is because we're very small as a brand, so we won't get a cease and desist. But if we are to be a bigger brand, that's when you kind of get the letters. But um, for now, we're in a good position where we can get away with fun things like that and make it um, playful and also it creates our 
attitude towards like how people see us too, you know? Yeah. I was just so wondering. Because yeah, I, no I saw it and I'm like, wait, it's not your Hillroy's? Why? Yeah. Maybe <laughs> one day we'll get a Hillroy collab. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that. yeah. That's how you might test it if yeah. it happens. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah. Can I just ask about like manufacturers? Like what yeah. manufacturers you guys use? Sure. Yeah. Is it all made in Montreal? Okay, so yeah, 80% of our manufacturing actually happens in Canada. So we're really proud of that too because it's very hard as a small brand, especially when you're like not doing huge quantities. Uh, it costs a lot more money to produce like smaller runs. So we do a lot of our things in Canada, whether it's like embroidery, cut and sew, like sweaters, like this is made in Canada, um, printing. So there's like maybe 20, 30% of our things that are made overseas, but um, yeah. And the way that we find manufacturing, because I get that question all the time, is like just research. Like we have Google, like just type screen printing, call like 10 different companies, talk to them, ask them questions. Um, always ask, what are your MOQs, which is minimum order quantity? Um, get a sample before you do production, because that's the worst mistake you can make. And obviously, we've done that before. Um, but yeah, always ask for a sample, always ask for the minimum order because you want to know if you're able to produce that much with that supplier. And yeah, I hope that answered your question. Yeah, sweet. Anyone else? Questions? Yeah, you? Uh, yeah. And you your team on the photo, like in the first pages, uh, there was a woman. Are, are you like only five guys? Or is no. Like woman in the team? Yeah, we have a couple other uh, girls in the team as well. They just couldn't make it today. But um, but yeah, it, it's I would say we're like what five six guys, two three girls. And when we had a pop up too, we had a lot of different uh, people behind. Yeah, too, so. yeah, yeah. yeah. Women's only. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll have our jobs. Sometimes we can make it, sometimes some don't. So no hope yeah. like in the in a perfect world, like we would love everyone to be here, you know. But you know how it is, reality. So. Mm -hmm. Had a question? Yeah, um, I was wondering when it comes to uh, when it comes to your design and doing new collections, do you always focus solely on uh, graphic design, or do you ever change your uh, your patterns, the type of t-shirts you're making, mm -hmm. or hoodies? Does that ever change? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, because um, I came from design school, like you guys, and like my first instinct when I got out of design school is like I want to create all the different things that I can do. Like I was just everywhere, you know. And then I realized like cut and sew is like so expensive, especially if you're gonna like do a lot of sampling, do a lot of like, if you don't have that like financial backing, um, and especially for streetwear, for me, what made sense is like to start with the classic t-shirt, start graphics like that. And then eventually when you kind of build a foundation, you're able to kind of experiment more. And we've done collections like the one, the one of one like rugby shirts where we had like a bunch of cut and sew pieces made together. Uh, Tails bag is a cut and sew. We made that custom. It's like a funny, it looks like a couch fabric, like a vintage couch fabric. Um, yeah, and um, so yeah, we're gonna get into like more cut and sew stuff in the next like year, but just to say like, it takes a long time to build the foundation because- there's, there's no limits, you know? There's just like right timing for things. Yeah. Yeah, it's lower design, just, you know, it's, uh, it's the door you know, to get to the right destination. Yeah. Destination. You know? Exactly. Because it's just the easy way to get into it, to get to the fashion world. Yeah. Because we're, we're, like, James is always making samples all the time. He'll come to the studio with, like, a flannel or jacket, pants. Like, we're still designing, but we're, like, waiting for the perfect moment. It's stuff we might use in, like, it's prototypes I'm always making for us, but it's stuff we might use in another three years because we, yeah, it just takes time with that kind of stuff. But yeah. we always have those ideas in our head of, new creative cool it, stuff yeah because it's about like first of all it's like a, about making it like sample getting the right fit as you know and then after that it's finding the companies and the suppliers that can make it for you at the quality that you want at the price that you want and also at the availability that you want like a lot of like suppliers ask for like 200 300 minimums like you can't you know like at a small scale as we are it's really hard to do that so yeah uh, I just want to ask, how do you get your pricing range? Like, how do you uh, oh, decide that? Yeah, thank you. I forgot to mention that. Um, price range, I would say, 
we vary from $45 to $140, 200 I would say. So it's very like affordable, um, accessible as well. And it's funny because like at the beginning, you don't really know what you're doing. So <laughs> you're just kind of like, you know, making sure it's pr printing on them and you're selling them for whatever reasonable price makes sense for yourself, you know? And then obviously giving that experience to you guys, hopefully you don't do that mistake, but. It depends to like, what are you looking for, you know? Like, yeah. uh, we want to put these t-shirts on people. We want to like um, expand exposure, you know, like expand the community. So if you are in that uh, stage, your brand, I feel like that's very important that people can afford it and put it in their box. Because yeah. at the end of the day, that's the best marketing you can have. Exactly. So you decide your price on being affordable to for the people. That was the beginning. <laughs> We've learned that, but now, now, so the cost is like you wanna you wanna take account of like everything that costs you money, right? So from gotcha. the hoodie, how much does it cost to make the fabric, the print? Oh wait, there's a puff print. Oh, that's an extra, you know, a dollar, two dollars. Oh, you got an embroidery here. That's an extra 2.5. Oh, you have a label. Oh, how much does it take to do a woven label? And then how much does it take to sew it on? So there's all these, these little elements that you have to add up. And then obviously look at your competitors and see what kind of price points they're selling at. And then having a margin that makes sense for you, you know? And you also have to do a, uh, a production, you know, for the marketing, like a photo shoot, a video. You need to like... Count all of those count things. all those things, you know? Yeah. Yeah, well, I have actually quite a bit of questions because I was just going. Uh, so I'm just going to say them, uh, just two of them, and then after I cool. want to answer my last one. So my first one is accessible. Uh, I haven't really, I only looked at your Instagram, so I didn't actually get a chance to see who is it accessible to. Is it accessible to, like, uh, plus size? Like, what kind of body, like, do you guys, are you guys targeting yourselves towards? And, um, oh, crap, sorry. Um... Yeah, I'll just top that answer in the yeah. case. I would say our, our fits are pretty like standard fits. Our hood, like depending on like what garments we're using, our t-shirts are made a little bit more boxy um, on the sleeves, and it's made a little bit shorter here. But um, we got yeah, we got like small to like double XL and most of the shirts are also a little spare. Yeah. Yeah. And. Second question is environmental. Like, how are you guys, like, oh. what's your stance on environmental? Like, yeah, that's, that's and what you guys are doing? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's what we are. Uh, yeah, well, first of all, like, producing locally is nice because, like, you reduce the footprint of, like, you know, shipping and all that thing, all that stuff. We also have a couple of our products that are, like, organic cotton as well. Um, organic, be I don't want it. Yeah. <laughs> being the organic, I don't want it personally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, some of the hoodies are organic cotton, um, yeah, this one that Teo's wearing, those pants too, um, but yeah, we do the most effort that we can consciously, um, especially, we did a collection, I think it was two years ago, we had a bunch of like samples laying around my apartment, and we're like, okay, like, we're not going to throw these out, so what can we do with them, so we reinvented them and repurposed them into like new garments, and we sold them, and that was like, you know, we're always trying to think forward. The rugby shirts we did too was like a one of one, so it's like all upcycled fabrics. Uh, the crossbody tails wearing is upcycled fabric as well. So we're doing the best that we can in the position that we are with the means that we have, you know? Yeah, yeah I think that's, that's important. That's yeah. the best. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah that's knowledge yourself. <laughs> You're doing more than big companies. Yeah, that's yeah, so. knowledge yourself, right? Yeah, trying to, yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, and so, I'm so sorry to oh, like, no for my last question, I'm sorry, go, go, go. a lot. Um, <laughs> my last question is like, uh, this actually can be kind of controversial, um, like what communities of street fashion do you guys appeal the most? Obviously I can see kind of, but who do you guys not want in your street fashion? Like who are you guys, and who are you guys like willing to push your boundaries for? Like, you're like, oh shit, like. I want to do pink stuff. I'm, I'm just saying, like, I want to do pink for, like, this kind of target. I'm just saying. Mm. Okay. <laughs> That's a cute question. So, so the question is, like, uh, who's our target and who's not? Like, 
who's your target? Where are you willing to go? Like, okay. who are you pushing your boundaries for? And who absolutely is not? I think we never thought about like who's not our target. Yeah. You know, it's more about like who's our target, um, and it's just people who like uh, they resonate with the brand and. They're cool. They understand the true meaning of being cool, not like ben, like Ben was saying, like that, just flexing and being cocky and all the stuff. You know, more like people who actually wanna uh, learn, do things, you know, and do things their own way. You know, mm -hmm. that's what really makes us happy. When like these people uh, share their stories, that's when we know like we don't know. Sorry, we don't know where the fuck we're going. But this makes sense. <laughs> yeah. If these people are communicating these things, it makes sense and it gives us energy to keep working. Yeah, it's, it's less about the branding, it's more about the community, you know. We, mm -hmm. we look at, we look at, we look at ourselves as like, as, a, as a, a movement company, pretty much. Less more in the branding side of it, because we're not here to sell you things. We, we're here to sell ideas, not, not, not very much in like, you know, products or like clothes and all that, mm -hmm. more ideas, we trying to share or spread this message that we, you know, our life, our daily life, our and, daily, daily and we, doings and... We're here to like close. open doors, not like close doors. Mm -hmm. So as I said, like uh, everything has a time, but of course one day we would like to design cool boots, like the boots he's wearing, or mics or desk, you know, like you have the freedom to create all these things. So like. Um, having a target that you don't want to focus on, mm -hmm. that you don't want to, is like it limits you a little bit. There's no time for it, you know. I think the best way to describe it right now is that we never really think about who we absolutely want to wear our stuff. Like, um, it's never like, oh, we want the skater kids to wear our, our hoodies, you know, or like uh, it's always what we make is kind of like a representation of ourselves and like where it's deeper than just like loso goes on illustrator makes a cool design and then puts it on a shirt where so like <laughs> it's <That's> just <laughs> it's a lot of like we don't really need to aim for anyone because the people that have the same kinds of values as us or have the same types of interests or half of the same interests as us We'll see what we've made, we'll touch what we've made, we'll try it on, and we hope that they'll like it, and if not, it's okay. It's a conversation that we've had with them, we've probably planted a seed, and that's it, you know. Why don't, why don't. Sheesh. Any more questions? Good? Oh, yeah? I was wondering, uh, what do you do with this stock? Like, when you have stuff that doesn't sell, you, it, like you get creative. I'll be using it. They give it to me. Yeah. 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 I'll be I like 10 siblings. Anyway, so. Yeah. Um, you just give it to friends, you know, get more people to wear it, really. But um, Use it for PR, too. Yeah, PR. You no. Know? Yeah. Uh, sweet. Question. You good? Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, you said that uh, the bike he's wearing is custom. Is that something you offer, offer to, like, your like the people buying yeah. Or, yeah 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 so you do yeah they're they're done now because what happened is it was fu a funny idea we like Wait, yeah. i think what he means is do, oh. do we make custom pieces yeah, for specific yeah. Like, oh. i mean we can totally do that there's nothing saying we cannot do it yeah, yeah. yeah. we sometimes for ourselves some yeah. one-offs mm -hmm. you know we have done it for like artists in the past you know like custom hoodies and stuff yeah. like that you know yeah, so. yeah. Any? oh how do you make um how do you deal with the loss of the money from not selling a bunch of uh, having dead stock, I guess? Um, that's a good question. Again, it's like getting creative, you know, like sometimes it's like doing an event, like, you know, reaching out to the community, doing, you know, what we did the other week was like, yo, let's just do a pop up in the park. Like, we didn't have to like think too much. It's like we just hung some shirts on a tree. We had a live DJ set. And so, you, ha you know, you just have to like engage and See where your community's at, and just kind of you can do sales posters. You can do you can do a sales too. Yeah. And, photos, like. and that's the reality you're gonna face too, right? It's like in your head you're always like wanting to sell everything so you could like move on to the next thing. But it's like 
that's not reality sometimes, you know? Yeah. And like, you know, we make some designs where we're like, we love, because at first it starts with us. If we're fans of it, we'll put it out, you know? Yeah. And like, sometimes it hits, sometimes it doesn't, but it's like you move on and you just you keep learn. building, you yeah. learn. You learn from it. You yeah. Know? Yeah. No, no. We're here for, <laughs> for this. Yeah. Um, I, again, uh, weird question. Um, how do you, what do you guys get from us technically? Like, what do you guys feel like you get from us? Oh, that's a good question. I like that. We're yeah. from, from the community, from the, from, from, from the class. From class. class. From us designing to you guys. Like. Yeah. I feel like you guys are studying us. And we are also like studying you guys. Yeah. I think we're learning about your questions and how you guys move, and we'll see you to like the work, your results. So it's gonna help us to understand more what the people your age, well, fuck age, but like they're looking for and how they understand the brand, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Honestly, it's like just a nice experience to be able to see like what young, fresh designers have to like bring you know to especially the montreal you know scene i feel like it's very important and wise of lucy to like really tap in with like a brand that has a similar demographic as you guys to kind of bring them in the class because it's like you as i don't know for me personally when i was in school like i want to relate to you know brands or i want to relate to people that are designing you know so that i could uh, you know just kind of see eye to eye with them so um, for us, it's the same thing, you know? It's like a good experience to just, yeah. you know? I think we are very excited to see, like, how you guys are going to, like, match your direction with the brand. Like, we're so excited to see that. Yeah. Yeah, when I walked in here, my first impression was like, yo, these are fashion designers, you know? And I'm here to be inspired, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And I have been, you know, since I got here, and I'm just... I already know what's the next collection, what we're going to be working on, because just based on, you know, what I'm, what I'm seeing right now, what I'm looking at, you know, like the way y'all dress, the cuts. So what's the our shoe? cut in this? No, I'm just kidding. Oh. Wait a second. Oh, it's our cut. <laughs> I mean, like, uh, it's I mean, it's it's out. Out. You it's might get a free shirt, but <laughs> you might get a free shirt. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Get the culture. Lawson doesn't it. take numbers. He doesn't take care of us, so don't worry about what I'm saying. Anyways. I think yeah, it's a good segment to go next. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah we so, speaking a bit about the project, there's last year we did, uh, we came and did a project as well with a different class, and um, we just wanted to give a little guideline this year. Nothing to, nothing too crazy, but like we just want a certain guideline so at least we get you know something strong out of it. Um, and for us, what's really important on our brand is having a message, having a story. So. Um, that's the first step, is like really getting you guys to like think more beyond the clothes and really think of something that, you know, uh, you could resonate with and you could share, you know? We, we really like this challenge because, ch I don't know, challenge sounds so big, but um, when you guys are gonna finish school, when you guys are gonna graduate, you know, you guys are gonna face uh, reality. For some people, this reality will be a very lucky reality and you'll have all the freedom and all the budget to design whatever is in your little head, which is amazing, the goal, you know, to have that freedom of design. But for some people, they're going to be working for six months, a year, two, three, four years with, like, other brands, houses, you know. And this is where you guys, as I said before, like, you need to know, okay, how I'm going to match my creativity, my direction, with this company, how I'm gonna understand, adapt myself to this company, and keep it authentic and keep it real, you know. Um, so, yeah, um, yeah, that's pretty much <laughs> what I to say. So yeah, so it's having your reality, you know. Having a message, sharing a story. Number two is we want you guys to include simple garments, like obviously go all out and your other things, but at least include a T-shirt, a hoodie, with a, logo on it. a graphic. A, type, a typeface of your choice, because we want you guys to explore typography, because I know when I was in school, I didn't get to really touch the design part, and I think it's really important, especially if you want to jump into, either it's, if it's fashion, streetwear, or if, even if it's high-end, like, you know, like you look at Louis Vuitton now, like, they get inspired directly from this, you know? 
So yeah, I just want to like you know help you on that. You know, because yo, topography it's like a different world. You know, it's like there's so many options. And you might get lost in there because there's so much to choose from. I'm nerd at topography. Like I could <laughs> name some some fonts if I look at them because I'm just crazy about it. And my font of choice, if I had to go pick a project, first thing that comes in my Alvetica. So this whole thing, I use Alvetica for it. And I mean, it looks good. It's delicate, it's elegant, it's beautiful, um, and it's easy. So for choose Alvetica if you want. For <laughs> <laughs> it's for, a cool font. For like, the first time. For the first time we're gonna be more than like eight people in the brand, you know, like we're all gonna be part of the brand for this experience, you know. So we're gonna give you guys the tools that we actually use to design to create things, you know? Yeah, open your airdrops. And another thing, yeah, an object or an accessory. So we want <laughs> we want to create. We also want you guys to create like something outside of clothes. So an object or an accessory. An object could be many different things. Um, I'll show a little video after too of the thing. But like you know, it needs to make sense. You know, it doesn't have. It doesn't have to have something around this academic aesthetic, you know, but there must be something in the accessory, the design, how you're going to present it, the marketing you're going to do that needs to attach everything together mm -hmm. and it makes it on brand, like all the pieces. So sometimes, like for us, for example, like we do sticker packs or sometimes we'll do a keychain, sometimes we'll do USB sticks, we've done... We've done apples as well. Uh, water bottle. Water, water bottle. bottle. They're a little bit expensive though. The what? The the, yeah, exactly. So uh, have fun with it. Explore a little bit outside of the garments. And yeah. And the last thing is a woman's garment because we think it's very important for us and as well as like menswear designers to just kind of get out of the menswear world and start designing, you know. Um, for the women's market, which is, yeah. Oh, I wear a lot of women's stuff, so. Yeah, that too. Yeah. Sweet. Um, I think that's, oh yeah. So we just wanted to finish off with. Oh, I thought you raised your hand. Just want to finish off with a little quote. Uh, Displace yourself. Learn everything you can. Try everything that comes along. Look at everything there is to see. Search, experiment, stay curious. Make mistakes, fail, stand up. Turn religious, turn conservative, turn radical, and then forget all about it and find your own way to create. Amen. So that's yeah. kind of like an ethos for ourselves is like just learning. The learning continues, you know, and you're going to make mistakes. You're going to, you know, do everything that you have to do to just kind of find a piece of yourself and use art as a vessel, you know, to express you know, what you stand for and what you do, so. Yeah, that's, that's a way of living. That's it. That's it. Uh, that's it. Oh, <laughs> okay. show the apple? Oh, sure. Yeah. We can get a clap, though. That'd be nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, quick question. Do you like Zillow? The font Billow? Come again? Billow. Billow, the, the script font? The Billow. Bello, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. It's all Yeah, so that was, uh, <laughs> that was an apple that we made, um, and we gave them out at our pop-up. But again, it's just an object, you know? It's like things that kind of live beyond the clothes that kind of like represent something bigger. So, um, yeah. Can you use, is like hygienic, you can eat it after? Yeah, 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 it's no. fine. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, this girl's trying to get us a lawsuit, huh? Hey, hey, hey it sounds like that. Um, I, like I think um, we're pretty much done, but I have, I don't know, 
I could ask some questions to you guys. Yeah, um, I have a lot of questions. Huh? <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, why are you guys here? Like, why are you why are you pursuing LaSalle design? What makes you want to pursue this? Raise your hand if you yeah. want to answer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess for me personally, and I think like other people relate to, I felt like school, like uh, I don't know, in English, but, like secondary, I think, was pretty much a bullshit. It was just not fun. So I wanted to experience something that was more creative, that I could uh, express my mind through it and make a job out of it. And I went in like a language uh, session in like my hometown, and it was so boring. So yeah, I decided to quit everything and move here. And it's been a few months since I've been here and it's been like the best time. Wow. Welcome. Yo, good for you. Yeah. That's beautiful. Anyone else want to share some thoughts? Some ideas? Yeah. I think um, I'm here because I want to change like everything. Like fashion is just too bland. It's it's becoming better, but like I, I want to make it so you can wear whatever you like whatever you want. Like you you want to wear armor. I can do it like in a way that you can be uh, that you can walk in the city, nice. but you know like cyberpunk clothes or whatever. Like nice. you can wear whatever you want. Guys can wear skirts, uh, dresses. Yes, I love that. Whatever. You can mix like Adidas and Nike together, right? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because you know, some people, when you put on a Adidas shoe, a Nike sh Adidas shirt, a Nike shoe, they look at you different. Like, wait, what's wrong with you? What's why are you wearing two brands at the same time? You need to wear one so all together. It's crazy, right? So you want all inclusive, like you wear anything that you want. You don't gotta choose brands and stuff. I, lo I love that. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Be free, you know? Yeah. yeah. Sick. Yeah. I think that it goes with the same wavelength as you, but um, yeah, I think this world is kind of messed up in some places, and there's a lot of change to do. And everyone has to wear clothes, and clothes says so much. So I feel like, uh, like I feel like I'm, I'm an artist, and like everyone here is. So like, there's so much you can express, and so much change that you can make through just like a piece of clothing. So I really, that's what inspires me. Like I want to change things. I love that. Nice. That's beautiful. A lot of changing out here. Yeah. Anyone else want to share some thoughts? No? Um, maybe, yeah? I just don't want to get bullied. I got bullied on my way home today, and I was like <laughs> crying. I was like, nah. generally, some kids were like calling me a furry, and I was like, oh, damn. Like, I generally almost like, I, this girl like almost got into a fight with me, and I was like, Come on, it's, it's not harming anyone. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> clothing is self-expression, you know. Like you, yeah. you carry your identity, you carry your confidence with it, you know. And just don't let people bully you like that, you know. Uh, yeah. You look amazing, so it's it's perfect. Yeah, I'm like, inspired. <laughs> LaSalle College made me so much more open. I was never like, I mean, when I was elementary school that was really mean but uh i mean i was never like judgy i wouldn't go to a person like her and be like what are you wearing and that's disgusting yeah. no <laughs> but like going to LaSalle college made me so open to the point that i don't even look back at people like sometimes you know people stand out they have the mohawk stuff like super cool or like like her outfit would make me like look back and be like oh okay but now it's really like LaSalle, there's so many different people at LaSalle college that you walk by them you're just like normal today like you you do you so I feel like it made us accept like even though we were accepting before it made us normalize a yeah. lot of things and we're just like as long as you're a good person and you're not hurting anyone do you yeah, so arts, I really love that art equals freedom exactly you know so every time you walk into art school or art college university or design university design it's always like you can feel the sense of freedom in it just because they want to do what they want because you know it's a little the, the little world that you get when you go to art school that's just my point of view i feel that every time i walk i'll go to visit some school 
I'm not in school, I'm a drop out, you know, no diploma. But I'm still like go door go to school just you know, just to feel get connected to you know, that sense of freedom that school give it to you. So I guess you guys are in the right place. So I'm not caring. <laughs> nah, I just keep my vibe, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I feel like not caring about like how you dress or like everything starts, right? Like you're wearing that because you like that because that's part of your story, of the things you have seen and you like. So you need to start by accepting the fact that like some people around you might not understand that because they don't know what's happening in your head, you know. So that's the first step to like accepting yourself and getting confident, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't. And I'm telling you guys, people in Montreal, they're very respectful of like fits and stuff like that. If you go to like Europe or like South America, I'm South American, so you guys can imagine my uncle or my auntie when I'm dressed like pretty weird, I don't know, let's say weird, but they go crazy, like 10,000 jokes, I mean, you know, and I just got a lot. You know? A lot of looks, right? Yeah. You get a lot of looks. Yeah. Where, anybody yeah. else? You want to share some, some deep? <laughs> you good? Rob? Cool. Thank so, you guys. Maybe we can take a picture with you guys before we Yeah. Oh, that would be amazing. Yeah.